Well, that it takes is, some doing, doesn't it? It's just playing. He's tough, this young fella. Look at that. I think he just brushed the eight then. Yeah. Like a booger. Well, he's been honest. That's what we want to know. Well, let's just say you around. cannot have <laughs> any skeletons in the closet. <laughs> and there's two blokes here on the couch. That Matt battle. Thompson. Matt Thompson and Fiddler. <laughs> they have a cemetery. This is the maddest place on the planet. <laughs> Dancing. The only show where you're allowed to do it without shoes. Andrew Jones, one of the greatest players of all time. Cuddles and kisses go a long way, especially when you're in trouble. Oh, the horse has bolted. Look at the big fellow go in. Imagine if he wanted to fire. <laughs> They're very what? horny and very aggressive. Are we allowed to put that to air? Sydney, stay classy. I love everyone for making me feel this good. Welcome to Freddie and the Eighth. Great to be back for another week. Another stacked weekend of action coming your way here on Nine, starting Thursday night with a couple of cracking teams that have been the benchmark over many years, Roosters and Storm. Freddie Eighth, welcome back. Hello, Matthew. Everything well? Good. Looking forward to the footy? Can't wait. Yes. Any night at Allianz is a good night. I reckon there'll be a big crowd there. I love Allianz Stadium. The best. Awesome. Fantastic. On the show today, the boys are going to highlight who they believe are the best young players in the competition that have played less than 50 games. So not the Walshers, you know, not, not the high profile yeah. or uh, spruik players, if you will. Mm. We'll delve a little bit deeper. We've got a very special guest joining us live from Canberra. He's been playing pretty well. Where's number seven, if that doesn't give it away? And we'll preview all the games. Do you like my badge? What is it? It's an Olympic badge, the Olympic rings. I'm wearing this because it is 100 days until the Without start of the Olympics. In. What colours? No idea. Rings. No idea. Yellow, blue, red, green. And one more. Black? Yes. For a bloke who doesn't care. Well done. Really? Yep. You got it. Do you reckon the dragon when they made that? That's a great. It's a, an iconic symbol. Mm -hmm. Audi, the car, looks very much like that. Mm. I wonder if they wanted to go to court. Audi's got four. Look at this. Look at the scenes from Paris. I was there last year. It is just the greatest city. I well, one of the great cities. I can't wait. I'm so lucky to be able to go this year. It's just going to be magic. Magic. I went to the Rugby World Cup. Yeah. You spend your life on, while you're there, on the electric bikes. It's unreal. That's all you do, you get around, that's all we did in Paris, just got around on electric bikes. That's a really good idea. Even coming home? Late. Coming home. <laughs> what could it's possibly go wrong? <laughs> How good's the coffee? Coffee and croissants. Sure. I'll put a video on of the, when we first got on the bikes, literally going around the Arc de Trump. Mm. That was hilarious. Did you get around okay? Like, it, it, with the major events, did they sort of handle the transportation reasonably well? It was awesome. Yeah? <clears throat> Weather was unreal. Um, How'd you find the French people? Uh, I, I just found a great experience, really. I just... So exciting. Biggest show on Earth, the Olympics. You see it all here on You know what it is, when you go on those times, now. it's people from everywhere. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. Everyone's partying. Everyone's happy. You do... Look. I'm going to learn... I'm going to teach myself some basic French. Yeah. Coffee, croissant... Schooner. 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 Pint. Those hands only fit pints. Well, Bonjour. No, Bonjour. Au revoir. They only fit middies. Look how little they are. Some breaking news, boys. Big bombshell news to hit rugby league today. The man regarded by many as the best prop in rugby league, James Fisher-Harris, is leaving the Panthers after this season and heading to the Warriors on a four-year deal. He has been granted a release on compassionate grounds. Amazing. Absolutely amazing news, that one. Well, I suppose with Fanua Blake leaving, there's a big hole. And that's a big man to fill that hole. Shows you the relationship between himself and the club, though. Mm. You know, he's, he's been at the front of that pack and most surely got a lot out of his body. He's been their hard man in, what, four grand finals? You can't replace him. No, <laughs> can't replace but him. But he is, as Freddie says, what his he's contribution done. has been immense. Yeah, it's incredible. He's, he's and you, you've premise. just seen two players improve, though. Like, Moses Leota went from a bloke who was playing 10 minutes mm. To now, he now, I feel like, he's the most powerful front row in the game. In the uh, Mouldy, is that if you pronounce it? Yep. I always get that wrong. Mouldy All-Stars last year, um, they roomed James Fisher-Harris and Leo Thompson yeah, right. together. When Leo Thompson came back, they said there was a change in him. Hmm. In everything he did, the way he prepared, the way he ate, the way he trained, 
obviously the way he played, just from spending a week with James Fisher Harris. No nonsense. Mm. He just and he doesn't. You imagine him at training when they're doing like full contact and someone's not ripping in. He just he just look at you and you go, okay, sorry. Well, he's a New Zealand incumbent, New Zealand Test captain. Is he? So to have him. Back at the Warriors, I think, is a huge boost for rugby league. I think it's fitting. It's a big decision by Penrith. Yeah. You've got to say, you've got to respect Penrith in this situation. And you've got to applaud Penrith. Yeah. It's a very mature decision. What other uh, front rows are out there? Well, what, money, what, is, what, what, what money is he commanding at Penrith? Well, let's say, uh, hypothetically, 800. 800? So that's 900. a fair chunk that they now have available to them. What, who do you think they might target? Maybe they might be going overseas to England. It's sort of off. Like, well... It's hard to know. We don't really know. It doesn't really matter that much anymore, does it? Do you do you think they'll go after a high-profile prop, or do you think they'll look to maybe buy two middle men and look to try and no, I think fill the hole that way? They'll have to buy play one prop. Okay. Maybe they go to England to get one of the big boys over there. What about Big Nelson? Oh, there's been a bit of talk around him in Melbourne, not seeing eye to eye. Has he signed for next year? I don't know. Yeah, right. It'll be interesting how he goes. Well, I don't know whether he might be under contract, but he'd been left out of the team for the first few games. He's back this week for his first game of the year. Mm. Just throwing it out there. So there you go. Bombshell news. James Fisher-Harris, who'd have thought? Some funny things happening. I thought he'd be a club. Geez, they've lost some players. (laughs) Haven't they? What? And you look at the players that have left to other clubs, they're the best players. Crichton and Kickout and the Bulldogs, they've changed their name. Burton. Who else has gone? Jerome's leaving. Capel's well, gone. Well, they lost Spencer I mean, had Spencer, they have known Spencer. this was in the pipeline, they may have thought otherwise. Different player. Wade Egan. They lost Wade Egan. Yeah. Um, what's the the lock from Parramatta? Jermaine Hopgood. Hopgood. No, Hopgood. He only well, played a handful of first grade games for them. God, he's a good player. He is a good he's player. He's a good player. Boys, the game is littered with outstanding young talent. We've asked you to go through and pick the eyes out of some of the best young players under 22 that have played under 50 games. This is what you've come up with. See, Jeremiah and is an international. He's only played 46 games. Yeah. Well, yeah, he'd be not the, a star. He'd be the top of the tree. Yeah. Ezra, not Ezra, far behind. Ezra, not far behind. And the one I love is Brendan Piercura. Mm. So I think Wong. Strange and Galvin look like they're going to they're going to play over 200 games. See why Wong hasn't he fallen off? Yeah. Something's happened there. He, he yeah. was left I don't know out if, of he's, a if he's busted Roosters team. Now the Raps and Isaiah Katoa are huge. I haven't seen enough of Isaiah, but the Raps are huge. And the Dolphins. Mm. I haven't seen enough. Of I saw him as a school kid. I watched, I've watched him closely. He's not overwhelmed or overawed by anyone on a field. He gets up. He makes his tackles. I think he's got a nice kicking game. Pretty, he's pretty accurate and consistent. Big, big body too. This far. season last year. And his first NRL season was absolutely outstanding. I remember to be, too, for to a brand new club, in halfback in a rookie club, yeah. Yeah. he was he was superb. And you have got to say, without a stable five eight as well, mm. well they must have had three or four five eights. Nick Aruma, Milford, help me well, out. Well, they man. were hoping he was going to be the five eighth, but mm. then O'Sullivan got injured, so he basically took over at halfback. Well, he actually played the first game. They dropped Milford, and he played. That's right. So he's one of them. Let's go through. Well, Lachlan Galvin's back this week for the West Tigers. Mm-hmm. I think everyone that's seen him play would realise just how great a talent he uh, is. Speaking... To Ruva, seriously, what he does. Mm. He's already won. Has he won two grand finals now? Or was last year his one, first year? No, last one. year he got rookie of the year. I can't. We, we interviewed Benji on Sunday out at Campbelltown. Well, I was asking him off camera about Lachlan Galvin and how he trains, what he's like. He's six foot four. I don't is think he's really? that tall, but he's close. He's very tall. I went up and saw... Um, yeah, good at balls, though. I saw Latu Fainu, who's playing this week. He had a boot on. Yep. Uh, and then Galvin, they were in the, uh, in the tunnel, just went up and said hello. But no, well, it's hard to know these days. They're all big. Well, the other one who... I, I'm um, Bullymore, Ethan Bullymore. I stood next to him the other day at Four Pines at Brookie. I thought he was like a nugget. Mm. <laughs> It's over six foot. Is it? Six one, six two. That's you said they're all big these days. Yeah. Interesting to see what happens with Taruva. I understand the Dragons have offered him a three year contract, but it's a bit fluid in that they're sort of saying, Well, we can pay you this, but maybe there's an opportunity to play fullback under which circumstances we could pay a bit more and seems a bit seems a bit wishy washy. Tyrone Sl- uh Who was Terrell that? Sloan would be happy, right? That was was it Dugan? Fullback money? No, he wouldn't. Was that Josh Dugan where that all came out about? Uh, Val. They all wanted fullback money. They all want fullback money now. 
Yeah. Wonder if he'll end up at the Dragons, Tariva. Big Maybe. money. Maybe. I couldn't there might imagine. be another one, though. Well, I couldn't imagine he'd be on huge money at Penrith, considering the stars they've got. Well, you look at their... You look at the Dragons' back line, they're all the same person. Mm. Those are silly. They're all, they all look like they're 105 kilo. They are a big team. <laughs> they're big. He brings a little element of difference. It's hey, amazing what he can do for a little fella, like, coming out of trouble. We just saw um, Lachlan Galvin. We might have a look at Ethan Strange here. The interesting element about Galvin and Strange is they're both young, inexperienced players but have been thrown in and have just taken to it like they've been there forever. But like that takes just, some doing, doesn't it's it? It's just playing. He's tough, this young fellow. Look at that. And his game's based around running game. He tackles well. He supports play. So as a young 5'8", or even a halfback, coming th when you first start, that's pretty much what you've got to be doing. Running the ball, defending strong, yeah. support play, being enthusiastic. Have a look at the speed here. No, 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 no. Came to attention in that uh, under-19s game. Mm. He played centre that game. Played centre, scored three mm. tries. Well, now we know why Ricky wasn't panicking about Jack White and leaving. No, no big name There's signing. No surety, the those blokes. Like you said, it's it's up to them, not to, to go in and you know make their presence. Matt, how come not his, his dad works at the Roosters and has worked there for a long time? So his dad coaches the women's team. Yeah. He's the NRLW coach. Uh, and then his sister did he, plays for Newcastle. Did Ethan, I think she might have come back to Roosters. Did Ethan come through the Roosters junior system, do you know? Uh, you imagine? Are they Central Coast? Central Coast. Who's doing the best job of developing young talent at the moment? Penrith. Penrith. Brisbane. Yeah, Brisbane. Some of the young Brisbane players that are coming through. Mind you, they've got the two biggest nurseries. So whether that system needs to be looked at, but I think a long time ago when Gus sort of started that whole going out west and academies and uh, Brisbane have always had the most money to invest in um, juniors and pathways. Remember they had Katani Staggs just mm. stayed well, and year, in. And years gone by, not necessarily now, but any kid in Queensland wanted to be a Bronco. Mm. You, can, you can have the nursery, but you've still got to have the system. Yep. You can get the players in. You're still the correct right coaching them. is so yeah. important. And I've been quite vocal over it, which is halves, which is the overcoaching of halves in junior footy. Um, but you get the right nursery with the right coaching, the right pathways, and then... They've got a system. They've got a thing at the NRL they called Rise, and it's run through Queensland and New South Wales, and they also have them all over Australia. And it's about teenagers, 12 to 16s. And what they do is they coach the coaches to not... Over coach. coach. Yeah. Basically, yeah. And Five it's, in for a kick. It's, it's a really great program. I've just getting my head around it and what we can do with it, but it's a great program and it's that period between, you know, year seven and year ten where um, you can get over coach, lose interest. You just gotta get out there, get your basics right. Coming up on Friday in the eighth, we'll have a look at all the games that we'll show you on nine across the weekend. But next, a very special guest, a bloke who might be the form player in the comp, Jamal Fogarty. But it seems like the more responsibility on Jamal Fogarty, his game's gone. Been brilliant. Yeah. There. Back to Fogarty. He'll kick towards Rapina. He's trying to get a clean run. High skiing up and over and try. A beautiful kick by Jamal Fogarty. Fogarty again. His kick out towards the wing. Where Schiller is above the ball. It's a beautiful kick. He won a game for the Raiders in Wagga Wagga with a field goal. Is this number four of his career? He's kicked it. Jamal Fogarty. You giants. He nearly kicks it to Melbourne. He hits it that good. What a kick. He is enjoying one heck of a season, Jamal Fogarty. And the joint leader of the Freddie and the Eighth medal joins us live from Canberra. Jamal, welcome to the show, mate. G'day, fellas. How are you? Fantastic. Great to have you with us. Freddie has been admiring your work all year long. Yeah, loving what you're doing. I think uh, real, a real base that you've given the Canberra side. I noticed their high completion rate, your kicking game. Was that sort of spoken about at the start of the year by Ricky? Was that a real effort to complete sets? Yeah, I think um, going off all of our stats last year in the games, um, just making sure we can give ourselves a good opportunity with the ball. I think last year we had 
one bullet in the chamber all the time. We'll, we'll shoot our shot and uh, wouldn't come off and teams will go down the other end and, and score pretty quickly off that. So it's just about trying to play the long game, get, get through our sets, uh, try and turn it over in the corner and get to a nice kick and front load in our energy. And um, obviously off the back of that, it's given us some nice opportunities and a good platform for the team. From the outside looking in, it's, well, it seems to me that with Jack White and gone, you've taken that extra responsibility, especially with Ethan Strange, at 5-8 uh, at and just said, right, this is my team, come with me. Is that, is that a fair call? Um, probably not a fair call. Um, to be honest, I think my role has been the same as last year. I just think that our team in general is just a lot more patient. Um, and we've kept it very simple and very basic in the early rounds because we know... Early, early games in the year. If we can get through our sets, hold the ball and be patient, most of the time you should come away with a win. And um, I think that's just been a really nice platform for us at the moment. So my role hasn't really changed. I think I'm doing a lot more kicking now. Obviously, having Jack there last year on the left edge with his left foot was really nice. And um, just to take a little bit of pressure there off Ethan, let him find his feet, um, just let him let him get into a groove there. I'll, I'll do majority of the kicking until he's you know ready to take some on board. And he's doing a great job for us there too. I think he just brushed the eight then. Yeah. Like a booger. Well, mate, he's been honest. That's what we want to know. Don't want him just agreeing all the time. Fascinating. I'd like to hear your, um, your thoughts on your young kids. Like, Xavier Savage, he looks like he's matured and he looks different to what he used to be. And obviously, uh, Ethan Strange, Joey was talking about before. What sort of spark, what's that brought to the team? Yeah, I think um, the best thing about Xavier, he's always had that potential in him. Uh, probably finding it consistently, coming in and training every day, um, having high standards. Probably wasn't so good, whereas this year he's actually come in, he's he's got really high standards and um, he just wanted to... He had a chat with Stick actually and said, you know, I think the best position for me and the team is to play on the wing and Stick agreed with it and I think his football has gone through the roof, just kept it nice and simple. And someone with his big frame for Xavier and his speed, you know, why not be a left winger and finish tries? And um, obviously with ETH, you know, he's, he's a young kid, he's got that flair, he, he's got... Nice footwork, probably a bit similar to yourself there, Freddie, with the, with the mm. footwork. And um, he's very fast too for a, for a young fella. So I think, you know, strange, he's only going to get better the more games he plays. And we just need all of our fans to obviously be a little bit patient with it. There's going to be times there where he's going to be excellent for a couple of weeks and a couple of times where he might drop off for a little bit. But um, I think with him and Xavier, you know, let them get the 50, 60 NRL games and then start marking them off that. Well, he's just re-signed Ethan Strange and... What's it like trying to re-sign someone? Like the first thing, you know, the Roosters, you get them down to Bondi Beach and you go, well, you know, you want to live here and play footy and play at Allianz Stadium just up the road. Get them a party bag. <laughs> what's it like down Canberra? What are you selling? What's appealing to you down there? What have you liked about it? Yeah, um, I love when Stick invites you around for a kilo tomahawk every now and then for free. That's <laughs> nice. Um, but I think it, it just starts with the people around the place, mate. Um, Don Fern and Ricky Stewart at the top, great people. Um, very, very affectionate and, and caring people. And that just flows onto the players. And that was probably one thing that I really um, realised when I got here, that how much your players care about one another. Obviously, you move away from your close ones and your family and you don't have much here. So they really make the most of it um, down here. And just, just little things away from football too. Always going for a coffee together and some breakfast, even going for a beer and a punt together. Just things sure. to keep everyone engaged and um, pretty tight little knit group down here. And I think that's probably one thing that's appealing. You know, you're pretty stable away from football. And, um, you know, once we get rolling and the footy works out well, that's probably another appealing thing as well. I first watched you play footy for the Burley Bears years ago, Jamal. And your career, it's been interesting. And it probably goes back to this idea that halves can develop a little bit later because you started your NRL journey a little later in your career and it's probably only now that you're realising your best football. Yeah, obviously um, took a bit longer than, than everyone else and to be fair, I probably um, didn't have a lot of confidence in myself as a young kid, whereas I see kids like Chevy Stewart and Ethan Strange there coming in the first grade, very confident, being true to themselves, whereas I was probably a bit more introverted and, and lacked that confidence and Obviously, playing a fair bit of Queensland Cup, I had a really good coach there, Jim Lenahan, and he made me understand my own game. And uh, once I kind of figured out, you know, this is me as a player, this is what I can bring to a team, I kind of ran with it. And um, I was just lucky enough that Justin Holbrook gave me a shot there at the Titans and uh, I haven't looked back since. I just have a look at these highlights here, Jamal. You've perfected that big spiral bomb. Oh, you give it. that a good whack. 
Yeah, I think um, having a coach like Ricky here, um, mm. he's always out there on field. He's a hands-on coach. Oh, and I can just picture always, him just challenging always, you. Come on. Yeah, he's um, he's frothing out the mouth at training when you're putting them up at training. And <laughs> he's he's always like, you know, if you're never going to practice them, you're never going to do it in games. So I'd rather you, you know, shank a couple here at training and, and get good at it. Um, and obviously, it's a it's a nice little weapon to have as well. Get a little bit of extra height for the boys to get down there. And um, sometimes I get a result. Now, Jamal, uh, realistically, Daly Cherry Evans, if fit, will be the Queensland halfback. But in the commentary this year, uh, Billy Slater has been incredibly glowing about your performances. Tell us about what that would mean to represent Queensland. Yeah, I think um, as a little fella growing up, you always see your idols in the Origin Arena. And to be able to even be in camp or um, to put that jersey on would be such a surreal feeling um, for myself. But... I'm a realistic person, mate. I think um, Queensland are in very safe hands there. Obviously, you got Ben Hunt every time he plays for the Maroons. I know he plays hooker, but he's always you know, competing and, and playing so awesome for him. So I think someone like Ben Hunt, you still got Sam Walker and Tommy Deed and, um, that have been in the squad over the last couple of years. So I think they're in safe hands. Um, but like I said, it'll be a dream come true, even if I was just in camp, whether, you know, I'll be ball boy, go and chase the balls and bring it back to the boys. Just whatever, be an unreal experience. You can't have a ball boy with a mo like that. Yeah. There we go, that's a bit dodgy. <laughs> Very <laughs> Freddie Mercury. Would like this. I thought a lot live aid at Wembley, you're outstanding, Freddie Mercury. Yeah. That was good. That was a great set. <laughs> hey, speaking of honours, Jamal, we've introduced the Freddie and the Eighth Medal for the first time this year. Now, to be honest with you, we don't really know what the prize is yet. No, we do. We're taking them We're taking to lunch. Them for lunch. Yeah, well, no, no, that needs the prize. Right. So, what? <laughs> firstly, what would it mean to win the Freddie and the Eighth Medal? And secondly, do you Wait. think you'd be up for lunch with these two? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great duo for lunch, mate. Um, yes. A couple of quiet ones and asked oh. for a couple of stories before the phones yeah. came in. I'm, I'm sure they'd have a couple of good laughs there. Oh, no, and... we'll, we'll go to you. We'll, we'll go to oh. Fish Week for lunch. Oh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> I don't know what's out there, so I don't know what you're talking about. Liar. Don't turn left. <laughs> Jamal, great to chat to you, mate. I've got to say, it's been wonderful watching the Raiders this year. Four wins from six, and everybody was sort of projecting the team to, to yeah. maybe struggle a bit without Jack yeah. White, but it's been the opposite. You've played great football, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the year. Keep it up. No worries, fellas. Have a great weekend. So, mate. mate, good luck. Jamal Fogarty joining us here on Freddie in the, the eighth. The form player of the competition. He kills it. Kill he the he? form player? Wow. Yeah. No, well... Well, he probably would have had Mate, he's a four three player. or four, four men of the matches. So. They're under pressure, aren't they? They've got a kid as a 5'8". They've got a couple of kids coming back from injuries, new yeah. back rowers. Their best player, he's been out all year, the back rower, the English bloke. Elliot Whitehead. Elliot Whitehead. Elliot Whitehead. Yeah. Might have lost Hosking for the season. Now, I, I don't know that we know exactly the extent of that injury, but they're saying potentially a oh, season-ending What a bummer. injury. Yeah, he's been going really good. On the way to the break, who could ever forget one of the great Canberra Raiders of all time? The one and only Mal Meninga. It was the shortest political career on record. Mal Meninga went on Canberra Radio this morning to announce his decision to contest next month's ACT Legislative Assembly election. Throughout my sporting career, I've had the, the urge to do community work. and I think But less than 30 seconds in, after stumbling over some words... I was just a person out there making sure that I was... Um, <laughs> I'm, this. I'm buggered. It. I'm sorry. I have to resign. The former Australian rugby league captain left the studio in embarrassment. Jeez. Having suddenly realised he wasn't suited to politics after all, he phoned the man who'd talked him into running. Independent Canberra MP and another former Raiders star, Paul Osborne. Then he returned, a load lifted off his mind. And I started talking about myself then and mm. started to say, try to convince myself that, you know, politics was the way for me to go, but in the end, you know, it isn't. <laughs> it's still Do what? It's hard to watch. Pretty that. strong doing that. Mate, it shows strength. Yeah. That's all it shows. You just can't do realise this. he's yeah, this ain't me. And just walked and went. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> Save yourself, you know, a long time of mm. torture. Mm. How strong. Vote one, the eighth member for Newcastle. Mm. Remember when Terry Campisi put his hand up <laughs> and they went through his social media. <laughs> <laughs> so I <laughs> seen him at parties dressed up as uh oh. Yeah, not good. Mm. Yeah. MG went to Dort. He had a MG had a crack what? at local. Uh, Mark Guy. Mark Guy. Yeah, I think he was, you know, f feeling around, but then no. Uh, Do you know what? You could still run for politics in Newcastle, and no you chance. you would win by that far. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs>
No. What about you, Freddie? No. It's the way the way politics is at the moment. You nearly got to you nearly got to commit to politics <laughs> young and have a pretty uh, clean. Well, let's just say you around. cannot have <laughs> any skeletons in the closet. <laughs> and there's two blokes here on the couch. That Matt rattled. Thompson, Matt Thompson, and Fiddler. <laughs> they have a cemetery. Unlike the, say, unlike Rookwood. the clean skin you've got here. Rookwood Cemetery. Uh, were you not approached at one stage? Well, sort of briefly, but I knew straight away. I knew straight away. Can you elaborate? No, not really. But who's some of the great... Who's some of the sportsmen... Oh, well, Imran Khan became Prime Minister. Michael, did Michael Cleary go into politics? Yeah. Uh, he was Minister of... Manny Packy, I didn't... Was he not running for Manny? TV? Yeah. yeah. Was he? Lazar. The great Glenn Lazarus. Matty Adamson was... Well, Tim Mander, the referee. Tim Mander. Graham Annesley. Graham Annesley, that's right. Uh, yeah. Oh, the skier. She's Manly. Darley Stegall. Member for Manly. He's a long, long... I'll tell you, he would have been a great Prime Minister, the great Mark Taylor. Mm. Vote one, Tubby. Yeah. Mm. Great. Probably man. the modern day, modern day players. Christian Welsh. He seems a pretty intelligent, even. Daily Cherry. Evans. Daily Cherry. Evans. Oh yes. He'd Vote one, Daily. Vote one, DCE. Boys, Willie, I don't know why Willie, we're Willie we're... Mason. <laughs> <laughs> hey Willie. They're skeletons. Oh, yeah. I don't know why we're talking about the possible return of City Country. I think it's just an excuse to show some classic old vision. I you love it. You coached it. Did you play City? You'd have played it. Yes. City. Played, you played, you played about it seven games. You captain yep. country. I always love watching it, but for some reason, as the schedule seemed to get wider and more games, it was the game that everyone thought had to give way, and eventually it did, which I think is a bit of a shame. Well, by all accounts, it used to be a trial match for Origin, which, whether it was or not, but it just, yeah. Towards the end, it just it had no purpose because the Origin teams were picked. Mm. And you know, as coach of City, it was hard sometimes to to pick teams because clubs weren't necessarily letting their players play. But this is the halcyon day of City Country. Mate, in the last year, I coached the last team, 2017. I picked Jake Marchetto. He was he played one game for the Dragons that year. That was he played pretty much the majority of reserve grade and got picked out of reserve grade. Mm. Clubs wouldn't let it. Players were nearly over it. I used to try to make it a fun week. Salsa night. Salsa night, that's where it all started. Yeah, right. Mm. Do you remember who the last player picked from country was? As in, from a point of view of before it became origin. Rex Wright. No. No. Paul Field. Paul Field. Right. Now, I know he, Rex Wright was no. the last country player to be picked for state of origin. Here's the 2003 teams. Now, you talk about great teams. Look at this. A who's who? Gee, that countryside's a handy team. Mm. Yeah, I can't remember. You, you were captain. Can't yeah, I know I was captain, <laughs> but I, I actually can't remember that game or anything to do with it. Um, Maybe you got knocked out. But anyway, a couple of very handy... Solomon Amono. Wow. Paul Upfield. Here's some highlights from that game back in 2003. Oh, I do remember, like, back in the day, it was it was universally embraced, and particularly to country people, it meant a lot. Mate, I played in City Seconds. When I was 18, I played in City Seconds in front of 30-some thousand at the stadium. And the year after, I played in City Origin. Mm. So they used to fill Sydney Footy Stadium. It's pretty good. It used to be that, a huge day. That last game was out of Mudgy, wasn't it? I think it was. Mm. You were coach of... City at Fitzy was coached. Fitzy coached country. Yeah. There you go. The great Robbie Cairns lifting Cairns. the shield. <laughs> On the way to the break, Roosters versus Storm Thursday night. We'll preview it right after this. There's some fantastic games coming your way online this weekend. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christian Welch. And Josh King from the Melbourne Storm. And you're watching Freddie in the 8th. Turn it up live and free on Channel 9 and 9 now. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> Already forgot the line, but. <laughs> Turn it up live and free on Channel 9 and 9 now. I, I'm. Oh, oh my days, I was terrible. Turn it up live and free on Channel 9. I'm sorry. I saw Lindsay do it. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Jerome Hughes. 
Isn't he supposed to say I'm Ryan Pepper? Oh, yeah, you just say you're oh and then he says that. <laughs> Turn it up, live and free, on Channel 9. <laughs> you're watching, Freddy, and the Pinocchio the Eighth. Turn it up. <laughs> and he just can't, we gotta move on. We're from the Melbourne Storm, and you're watching Freddie and the Eighth. Oh, he's on fire. Done! <laughs> Turn it up. Hi, I'm James Sinesco. And I'm Luke Keary, and you're watching Freddie and the Eighth. Thank God we finally got some professionals. It's not that hard. One job. Geez, they looked happy, them two, didn't they? Mm. They are ultimate professionals, those two gentlemen. Doing maths promos. Fred in the eighth medal. He's not happy about the Mavs promo. It was only three weeks ago. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at who the boys voted for over the weekend. Now, um, Patrick Carrigan carrying the Broncos pack. He yeah. was enormous. No Did pain everything. Us. No pain. He's taken the uh, the low there. Joey Manu was just out of this world. And I've gone for a winger, Mulatalo. He was. Geez, he's a good player. Two blokes there, a minor ran over for 300 metres, Tarpanay over 300. Mm. He's been very good in the middle. Him and um, Papa Lee have been awesome. There's two front rolls and... Oh, it's a four-way tie. That would have been expensive lunch. Uh, well, Hammer's injured for a while now, isn't he? That's Hammer's out for, what, four to six weeks? Dylan Edwards, Joey Manu joins them at the top. Uh, Nathan still missing this week. I have noticed, actually... Um, some content on social media with Nathan and Mary reacquainted this week, so I think she might be... Mary McGregor. Mary Fowler. Oh, OK. Um, back from the UK. And it's a great timing because the Panthers are playing at in Bathurst, so Nathan could take her out to Bathurst and show her the sights of the Central West for the weekend. Take She's her like around the, the racetrack. Yeah, well, that's it. You could mm. go watch the footy, go to the Bathurst Grays. Someone told me when you go to the Bathurst the racetrack, what's it called? Mount Panorama. Mount Panorama. People get excited and come down Conrad Strait. Conrad Strait. Whatever it is. Yeah, you can There's always cop. There's cop always cop. There's yeah. always yeah. coppers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Nathan could take, go up the top and do a few burnouts with Mary overlooking yeah. the city. What a wonderful place to go. So Joey Marnie last week, breaking the records. So what was it, 360-odd metres? Mm -hmm. He's run over 400 in a test match, test, so yeah. it's actually not the best he's done personally. It's such a shame to see him leave the Roosters and head to um, Japanese rugby, but it is only for one year. It's a one-year deal worth a million bucks. Really? Do you reckon that's just a cash-in and I'll be back? Yeah, because they run a short comp as well. 12 yeah. games or 14 games? Yeah. Eh? And I think it starts earlier, so... That's crazy, mate, 12, 14 games. Well, he's a pretty good player. Yeah. What What's position will he play, centre? What's the tax rate over there, do you know? Oh, yeah, yen? So, yeah. I'd say it wouldn't be 49. <laughs> it's yen. It's in paid in yen. Mm. So they, they spoke to the All Blacks coach in the City Morning Herald, the nine press probably around the country, actually, Steve Hansen, who said, well, he, this guy's got the same skill set as Sonny Bill, mm. who we know went back and forth and he played won a World Cup for the All Blacks. Sonny inside played centre. inside centre, yeah. Yep. So mm. that's like a... Where's Manu playing rugby? Inside centre? Yeah. I'd say so. Does he kick much? No. It's your fullbacks have got to kick. They do a fair bit of kicking. Let's play here. Where's he going to play? Uh, mostly, I'd say inside centre. Oh, I think he wanted to play fullback, didn't he? Yeah, but you've got to kick heaps, don't you? Well, he, I'm sure I mean, he, he can goal sure kick. He can. Yeah. He's a great goal kicker. Yeah. Ronaldo Mulatalo, he's lost his little mate Sione Katoa for this week's clash against North Queensland down in Cronulla. They get a youngster called Sam Stone Street. Going to make his debut, but big Ronaldo, what a what a player out out on the wing. He, he's such a big unit. Yeah, he's he's a he's an athlete. He's a gun. Wow, he's only young too. He's a kid. He's got a long way to go. He'll be one of the great wingers, I think. He's been around for ages, hasn't he? You talk to anyone about him at Cronulla, talk to Fitzy. You got so much respect for him. Mm. He gets a bit cheeky every now and then, but that's just part of him. He just got plenty of life. Brilliant. He's awesome. Carrigan's taken his form to a completely new level since Haas has been unavailable. Mm. He's a gun. And he gets him around the park. You see him organise and everything. Not only an attack, defence, you can see him. He yeah, just, defence. He's... He understands the game so well. He's a ill captain of Australia one day. He's got those absolute captain leadership qualities. Intelligent, speaks well, you know, leads by actions, by all accounts, real professional. He's just... Uh, He's a complete package. Good hair. Good style of a bloke. No Tino for Queensland in the origin. He's going to have a big job there as well. Okay. Still got a few others. Nanai. Look at 
Luke. Vinny Filiaki, Lukey. Oh, Tarpin, yeah, here's your not, man Tarpin. They're not middles, they're not middles. Here's Tarpin, eh? He's nice been so good for him. It's funny sometimes, especially front row, and how long it takes you to mature <laughs> and learn the position. Well, you would have learned a lot of Josh Papali. Look at that footwork for a big man. When That's he gets... a, it's a beauty, man. He knows what he's good at, and he does it. Do you reckon Josh Papali, he might make a origin comeback this year? Oh, is he retired from rep footy? Didn't play last year. Jeez, they might. Billy Welsh. might be on the phone. Christian Welsh, yeah. Oh, well, Lindsay Collins, of course. Lindsay. Mm. Thursday night footy. This is going to be an absolute belter at Allianz. Roosters storm. It is absolutely a flip of the coin, this one. Mm. Can't wait. Live and free. Were you surprised Paps got off with that tackle on Josh Adokar? I'm trying to remember what, what happened. It was oh. a hip drop-ish. Hip drop-ish. Ish. Oh, last time they met finals, I forgot. This was their last game. Well, Roosters, were gonna the knock them. Roosters were going to beat them. Beat them Roosters the led 13 12. Oink, 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 oink. They were home. Last the winner of the game, Ball. Munster to Warbrick. Warbrick. And a great try. He had plenty to do. I can count This remember. would have got did him we... into a prelim, can you believe it? Here did it is. We... This is the end of the okay. game. Were we down there for this? Yep. Look at that. Can you put last play of the game? That was the last play of the game to win it. Can't remember. Really? I must have. Everyone had given up on the Roosters. They beat the first yeah. week. They beat. Oh, uh, that's right. Who'd they beat the first week? They went and beat. Was it Cron not Cronulla? Sharkies. They beat Cronulla. Sharkies. Yes. And they went down there and nearly beat them. Well, they rattled home at the end of the year, remember? Yeah, Victor. Yeah. On the back of Victor. His last six weeks was unbelievable. That's they would have got him into a prelim. Can you believe that? They, they're pretty good at the death Melbourne. Uh, what's going to happen Thursday night? Allianz, of course, so mm, not a no, Melbourne home game. I've got to lean towards Melbourne and just look at their spine. And Big Nelson's back. Mm. Nelson Big Nelson's back. Me. No, Tui. Uh, the Roosters have got a few back. Teddy, Teddy back. Broke. Still no Sam Walker. Teddy's back. Uh, Walker's on the extended bench. Still no uh, Dominic. Yeah, but he's 22. Oh. He's there. Well, um, he's not been ruled out then if he's on the extended bench. I think there was a few more protocols and stuff to go through. Teddy back at full... I know he's a great, great player, and this isn't a question that's trying to provoke um, some kind of provocative response, but are they a more dangerous team with Marnie when he's unpredictability at fullback? Well, they totally change when Teddy's not there, and they totally change their attack when Connor Watson went to 5'8". They played more out of Brendan Smith, out of the middle of the field, out of dummy half. Um, he made a huge difference on the week, Brendan Smith. Played good, yeah. Mm. I'd like to know the stats. I, I think there's still question marks over the combination of Sam Walker and Luke Keary in the halves. Mm. Going on to the Teddy thing, you, well, you forget what he did in the Brisbane game in one of the in the early games. Like, I, I'm not knocking Teddy. So well and good, you know. I, I just think at the moment they're both there, getting them both in the team, and Tedesco's a fullback. Simple mm. as that. Be love love to see a way that they could sort of almost play a dual role though. Like when, when he pops up around the ball, man, he's just he's well, they could do that. Dynamo. If you had if you had the right halfback. Uh, maybe later in his career, Sam Walker, who could do it all. You could play Manu 5-8. We used to do it run. in Origin with Turbo. Turbo. It's almost like the perfect recipe for them, isn't it, with Tedesco and Manu in the same team. Eels Dolphins heading up to Darwin. They've been going there for over a decade now, you know? Yeah. Big journey up there. The Dolphins get their, I think... I love first Brad Arthur there, has, like, half a dozen waters <laughs> in front of him. Maybe even more. And they're maybe. empty, by. <laughs> it's actually vodka. Um, Jeez, this bloke's a good player. Yeah. Hop good. And so is he. I don't think he's improved you know this year, Will Penicene. Yeah. So where does he play next year when when um, Lomax goes in? The other centre. Has Lomax been promised a wing spot? <laughs> Who knows? Centre spot? Fullback spot? <laughs> yeah, this will be a great game. They uh, 10 years. Jeez, that's gone quick. They're missing a few of the Dolphins, though. Yeah, missing. Young guy debuting at fullback. Oh, he's played a couple of games. Oh, Trey Fuller. He's uh, been brilliant in the Queensland Cup over the last few years. And he's played first grade for the Dolphins? Yep. Right. Might be his second game, but he has definitely played before. He played last year. Sunday afternoon, Sharks, Cowboys. I cannot trust North Queensland. No. I can't get a read on them. Can't get a read on them at mm. all. Freddie, how can you be such a brilliant team and have all those brilliant players and just not be able to put it together like they do? I was looking at those stats. So they've scored 60 more points than Cronulla. Who are coming first? But they've conceded 50 more points in Cronulla. That's a lot of points That's in a six lot of games. Points. That's a lot of points. Pretty much generally the best defensive team. I think they're sitting on about 
Uh, 90-odd points for the season so far. Think... Do you think they're missing Cohen Hess in the middle? He's a big loss. No, I don't think so. Oh, look at their forward pack. It's unbelievable. Mm. They're just looking a little bit soft or something. I don't know, I don't know what the word is. They just, just aren't concentrating for the full time. Have you seen their forward pack? <laughs> On paper. <laughs> you don't need anyone else there. Finnefield were out on one edge, Nanai. Lukey. McLean. Well, Lukey's out. Lukey's out, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Tamalolo. Cotter. Tamalolo, Cotter. Robson. Robson. Neem. McIntyre's been coming off the bench. Just, Griffin Neem's a good player. There is Do you just think it's not an emphasis on defence? Any forward pack as any. Do you just think they're not... That haven't got a great attention to detail with defence? Well, sometimes you just go through stages where you just get careless every now and then. You're like, your mindset's not... You know, it's not steeled. <laughs> they come in, in and out of games yeah. in one game. They look good for 20 minutes and then they look rubbish and then they come back. Well, the Titans did waves. that. The Titans did that with them. If it wasn't for an intercept off um, the winger who got the most tries, Kyle Felt. Hmm. He took an intercept. He doesn't get that. Titans well, might Titans beat are going them to come home and get it. Just if you were looking at it, if you're a coach thinking, of, I want to coach any roster in this comp, they'd be right up there again in contention with teams you'd want to coach. They've got so much talent. Mm. Um, but Cronulla, they're, they're very gutsy and always very hard to beat at home. And it's mm. weird things happen down in the, down in the Shire, as we know. Mm. Yeah, they'll be hard. You're doing that, guys. Sunday? I'm off. Why? Aren't you Overworked. Are you doing the Sunday footy show? Yeah, Sunday footy show. That'd be a great show. segment. Who's on this week? Turn it up. Mm. Um, TBC. I think Russell Crowe's coming on to talk about the woes of uh, South Sydney. Obviously hasn't booked anyone yet. Boink, <laughs> boink, <laughs> boink. And then the second uh, Chris Hemsworth's coming on to right. talk about his training. Oh, good. training. So we're all going to do it with their shirts off. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And your pants off as well. Uh, thanks, gents. I wish. Thursday night footy tomorrow night. Don't miss it. Roosters versus Storm. Have you got a moral this weekend? Do you think it'll win? I think the Broncos up there. Saturday night game. I can't tip, but she's already in camera. got a great chance in that game. Against Brisbane? Yep. Mind you, I'm running last. I think Parramatta. Parramatta are morals. Against? Uh, Dolphins. Dolphins. Sharks? Cowboys? Um, uh, tip, I tip Sharks. Who are the other ones? Thursday's going to be a good game. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a great game. Penrith will bounce back from that loss at Manly. Mm. Maybe a week off. Gets the yeah. Tigers. Yeah, Tigers were disappointing last Everything week. Full so house at Campbelltown. Oh, that was sad. Was like Everything looks so slow. Something. That was set up for him on Sunday too, wasn't it? Mm. When, when, do, when do we do a Tigers game again? I'm looking forward to watch uh, Lachlan Galvin. Galvin. He returns this week. Maybe he'll be the spark for the Yeah, West but I'm saying, Tigers. when do we do a Tigers game again? I want to see him live. We'll find out. That's a question without notice. Google. Uh, thanks well, for coming on, Fred in the Oath. Isn't a question always without notice? I hate when people say that. Well, not if you've notice. prepared it when you're on a television show before. Question without so notice. So you know the answer. But do you put a full... Question mark on the end. Bye. Exclamation. Bye bye. bye bye. This year, NRL on Nine is your one stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights, action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast, get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And of course, my favourite, Freddie in the Oath. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on Nine and get all your entertainment there.